morning and welcome back to IMG Academy Field on the campus of IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Getting ready for another morning of U.S. women's lacrosse as they take on Syracuse University. My name is Ryan Sudol. Alongside me today is my broadcast partner, Melissa Coyne, the Director of Game Administration for U.S. Lacrosse. And after a five and a half hour weather delay yesterday, this game uh, postponed. We saw a split team USA squad uh, and now we're probably going to see the same thing this morning, taking on one of the best teams in the country in Syracuse. For sure, I think everybody will get an opportunity this morning, but I would expect the starting lineup for the U.S. to be front-loaded with a lot of experience and a lot of firepower. And in talking about the starters for the U.S. women's national team, in goal is number three, Devin Wills. Also on the field will be number seven, Katie Schwartzman, number 11, Jen Russell, number 12, Kayla Trainer, number 13, Daniela Trasco, number 19, Sarah Bullard, number 21, Taylor Cummings, number 23, Alyssa Leonard, number 28, Courtney Waite, number 29, Megan Dowdy, number 35, Michelle Tumalo, and at number 38, Alice Mercer, as far as the players to watch. Obviously, a lot of Syracuse alum on this U.S. women's national team, but saw an impressive showing in the second half last night from Kayla Trainer as well as Michelle Tumalo, who I believe had five assists. So definitely going to be keeping an eye on those two, especially with Michelle Tumalo being one of the assistant coaches on the Syracuse roster. Uh, last night, we saw it a little bit with the University of Florida and Becca Block and kind of the dynamic that had, but Michelle Tumalo being more a little bit more involved in the attack is going to be interesting to see how she's received around the crease and inside the eight meters. Uh, definitely, you know, Kayla Trainer and Michelle Tumalo spent time working together as players, as teammates. Now you've got uh, Trainer still with a, a year of eligibility at Syracuse and Tumalo as her assistant coach. An interesting dynamic there. Definitely going to be uh, good to see how Syracuse responds to both their teammate and their coach on the other side of the field. And again, we had talked a little bit about Kayla Trainer. She will play with Team USA again this morning. She was a terror. Tiwa Rotten, finalist and first team All-American the last two seasons at Syracuse. 117 points as a sophomore, second highest single season total in Syracuse history. 210 goals in the first season. And we saw last night that when she got uh, near the net, it was very hard to stop her. She got a little bit flashy and missed uh, on a nice little backhand, but still one of the more electric players that we had an opportunity to see. Fantastic player. And from what I hear from Coach Ricky Fried and others on the team, she's also a great teammate. She's been in the U.S. program for quite some time, having played for the U19 team in 2011 that won the gold medal. So she's familiar with this system. She's a great player and um, certainly someone I think is going to be a standout for Team USA. Also on Team USA, we'll take a look at the goalie Devin Wills last night. Let a couple by, but as we saw in the second half as Team USA started to pull away from the University of Florida with the fresh legs, Devin Wills is definitely a force to be reckoned with in net. Devin, the most experienced player on this U.S. squad, now with the retirement of Lindsay Monday and a few others, I think she is the senior team, senior member of this team. Um, so definitely she's the anchor, she's the backbone, she can start a lot of transition, get a lot of things going for them. And that will bring us over to the starters for the Syracuse University women. Number zero, Kaylee O'Connor. Number four, Erica Bont. Number five, Haley McDonald. Number seven, Brenna Rainoni. Number 10, Ella Thorpe. Number 12, Nicole Levy. Number 13, Mallory Vihar. Number 22, Taylor Gate. 24, Emily Resnick. Number 37, Hallie Majorana. Number 47, Riley Donahue. And number 89, the goalie for today will be Allie Murray. They are coached by Gary Gate, the assistant coach Reggie Thorpe, and also Michelle Tumelo, who we mentioned will be playing with Team USA uh, today. So what, what can we expect from, from Syracuse as far as what they'll be able to put pressure on for Team USA? Syracuse plays a very high-powered attack. They'll get a lot of transition going if they can. Obviously, any team of Gary Gates is going to have fantastic shooting, great stick work. Um, you mentioned a couple of the starters, one of which is number 22, not surprisingly, Taylor Gate, the daughter of Gary Gate. Um, she's a senior this year with one more year of eligibility after this, had a couple of knee injuries, but she really is the leader on this team. Look for her to do some good things today. And now we see the captains at the middle of the field you see on your screen, just about three minutes away. They've decided because of the postponement last night that they are going to forego the national anthem. We will have them before both of the men's contests. Again, stay tuned. We will have the uh, uh, University of Denver men taking on the U.S. men's national team at 11 o'clock, and then we'll see a 
uh, U.S. and Canadian rivalry, the U-19 squads uh, also prepping that game scheduled for 1.30. And based on the forecast, uh, those should go on as scheduled, unlike last night where uh, everybody had a little bit taken out of them after the five-and-a-half-hour delay, but everything looking to be on schedule here today at IMG Academy. And again, you just recently, Melissa, getting a text saying that they wanted to forego the anthems yes, to get that extra time, obviously being uh, up earlier than most <laughs> most would be for a contest. They were prepped yesterday to play at 5 p.m. and instead they're playing at 8.30. So as, as far as both Syracuse and Team USA, how does that affect your preparation, if, if anything? I think, um, you know, for Syracuse, uh, we really appreciate how flexible they were um, willing to change the game to this morning. But I think it's, it's a better situation for them. They were able to get some sleep, get some food in them this morning. It's early, but it's not too early. A lot of these teams have 6 a.m. practices on their campuses. So I think it's something they're used to. And, um, you know, I, I, think, I think they'll be fine. We've got a packed day here, a little bit of a tight schedule. So we appreciate everybody being accommodating. And we're just being passed the note that they will, in fact, do the, the national anthem and walk up. So we'll get a, uh, a little bit of a delay. So we will have, uh, have that for you as it comes. And again, a lot of exciting things going on for U.S. lacrosse. This game uh, setting up the, the, the cuts that we had talked about last night in the, the Florida game where we saw the, the first group of girls probably not uh, nearly as strong as that second group that came out in the second half. But again, this morning, uh, some people going to be getting equal looks uh, as they move forward towards those cuts that they have to make. Um, so e either way, uh, the effort that we saw from Team USA last night just absolutely uh, fantastic. And I think uh, what that first team that we saw uh, – not to take anything away from the uh, University of Florida because they, they played their, their hearts and their guts out, and it was uh, just a phenomenal contest for all 60 minutes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is Team USA. They're the defending World Cup champions. It's a difficult group to break into. I think you saw a little bit of nerves maybe with that first group, some of the new players in the mix, but I expect them to settle down some today. I've had a brief minute to talk to Ricky Freed this morning. He said they talked a lot about that, to not get overwhelmed by, you know, where you are in the, in the mix and just get out there and play. Um, you know, there are 36 of them here today. At the end of today, there will be 24 that move forward to a European tour in June. Um, so I know that's on everybody's mind out there, no matter how much experience they have. But um, I would expect to see a much more polished and calm and strong Team USA this morning. And now just anticipating the start of the first half and waiting patiently for the national anthem. We'll see if they do, in fact, have it. Don't obviously want to step on it. And that's what we will pause for. We'll be right back. You are watching Team USA and Syracuse getting ready for lacrosse here on Stream Sports. Welcome back to IMG Academy Field, getting ready for first half action between Team USA and the Syracuse Orange. Team USA will be wearing their same uniforms we saw them in last night, Navy with white numerals, Syracuse wearing uh, <laughs> what looks almost like the Florida Gators uniforms as well, their uh, white uniforms with orange numerals. Looks like they'll be going left to right in the first half and getting ready for the opening draw.
Again, some of the Syracuse fans coming down from New York have uh, showed up today. It's not been a, uh, an easy few days, especially for the people that were expecting two contests yesterday and uh, an opportunity to see uh, both Team USA squads play at once, but uh, definitely going to get rewarded with some good lacrosse here this morning. It's been a great crowd here with our, we've run US lacrosse run a couple of different clinics. There's been a lot of kids around. I know they were disappointed last night with the, with the lateness of the game, but I would expect to see more people start to trickle in here. And Syracuse fans are some of the most loyal and most well-traveled, so not surprised at all to see a lot of them here. A lot of loyalty also from some of the other Syracuse sports as far as basketball is uh, concerned. The football program kind of not as strong as it has been, um, but definitely some very, very passionate fans. And as far as the uh, broadcast world goes, uh, many, many alumni in the broadcast industry, and Syracuse will take the opening draw. That is Erica Bott running down the left side. And we saw the Gators get the opening goal last night that put Team USA initially on their heels, but able to come back and come away with a 19-8 victory just before we got out of here right about 10.30. And we'll have our first whistle. You see some early pressure here from Team USA. Devin Wills is out on the ball, marking the ball, double teaming with her teammates. So I, I, I would expect, and I'm sure Syracuse expects, to see a tremendous amount of pressure. Back up top, that is Taylor Gate, the senior from Fayetteville, New York. As we see the official and the yellow flag out, A delayed penalty in the girls' game. If the attack has an opportunity to score, they'll hold that whistle until the scoring play is over. And that is as Nick dumps it out. Back out wide to Gate. Again, Team USA playing fantastic defense inside that 12 meter line, and now a possibility for a shot from Riley Donahue, but to come back out. Able to juke one and set back up top. Very tenacious defense by the U.S. women Here early on. Syracuse yet to put a shot towards Devin Wills, but looks like that may change shortly. Again, Gate and a little bit of a check. That one is going to be a free opportunity for Syracuse. Little push from behind with Taylor Cummings there, so we'll have a free position shot here. As you notice, nobody is now in front of her from the center hash. And Erica Boat able to sneak one by Devin Wills, and that is how Team USA will start again, trailing 1 0. Syracuse Orange Syracuse and goal. Erica Bott. Erica Bott. Erica Bott will get the first goal with 27 41 remaining in the first half. Take a look at the replay again. We saw last night whenever either side had a, an opportunity at that free run up to the net, it was uh, usually not beneficial for them. And we'll take a look. At this level, it's just a, you know, as you can see from the replay, a tough spot for someone with no defense there. It makes it tough on the goal. You certainly don't want to give up penalties there. Then just shooting it to Devin Wills left. And again, we saw last night, very, very resilient is number three for Team USA. For sure, so you've got a, a foul on the draw there. Again, the draw has to go above both players' shoulders. If it doesn't, they will redraw. That's what you saw there, so they'll reset it here. You can also see Taylor Cummings instructing her teammates. She's pretty certain about where this ball's gonna go. And as you see this one side overloaded here, that could be part of the reason. And Cummings able to win the draw. Now quickly the other way to Alice Mercer. As Team USA cycles behind the net. Sarah Bullard and now we see Taylor Cummings with a free approach to the net and able to sneak that one by the goalkeeper. And Team USA ties it at one. 
Just about 30 seconds after they went down. So 27.09 remaining and we're tied at one goal apiece. It's a good look by Kayla Trainer. That's one of the things that makes her Team really USA difficult to defend is you're never quite Taylor sure whether Cummings. she's gonna turn that corner and go to goal or whether she's gonna find an open teammate. In that case, she found an open teammate in the middle. And we'll take a look on the replay. Yeah, you see her come up here. The defender has to play her honestly, not sure whether she's gonna turn, she finds a teammate. And you just saw Allie Murray come out of the net a little bit. Taylor Cummings had a wide open opportunity, sneaks it by her and helps Team USA tie it at one goal apiece. See a change up on the draw here, Alyssa Leonard coming in and second to Taylor Cummings, there may be nobody else better on the draw than Alyssa Leonard. So difficult for Sierra Hughes to kind of figure out what's going on in the draw with the two best drawlers in the world probably. And you see Taylor Gate on the draw again, the daughter of Coach Gary Gate. Always a fun dynamic at any level of athletics. I, I can't imagine what it must be like to have, uh, you know, Gary Gate as your dad, an icon in the men's and women's game, um, a tremendous teacher and a great advocate for his players. So a senior, so the last year that she'll have to deal with her dad. She's got one field. more year of eligibility. She had two major knee injuries, and so she uh, was awarded a medical red shirt, and she'll have one more year after this to finish up. That could be either a good or a bad thing <laughs> for Taylor. I think, it's, I think it's a bad thing for everybody else to have to play against her for another year, so. And Jen Russell bringing the ball up for Team USA. Pass back to Wills. Syracuse playing very far back defensively, not really putting any pressure on in the midfield. I don't think they want to get into a track meet with Team USA. Um, I think they have a, you know, they've got a single roster here today. They don't have 36 players to uh, to run, run and gun with the U.S. for 60 minutes, so not surprised to see them hang back a little bit and get into their defensive set. And now an opportunity and sneaks it into the corner does Katie Schwartzman for the second goal of the game for Team USA, 25-47 remaining. Just a fantastic shot by number seven. Katie Schwartzman, a University of Maryland product. You, you could field, I think, the entire U.S. team from Syracuse, North Carolina, and the University USA of Maryland. Goal, I, I think seven. that's what makes this Katie team, Schwartzman. when you see them uh, do so well together, so many of these players have played together. You saw Schwartzman just getting the pass out top near the 12-meter line. and just finding an open lane and sneaking it in. Allie Murray really had <laughs> no, no idea where the ball was coming from, so excellent play by Schwartzman. Not the best or most fun day to be in the goal against Team USA. Now we see number 32, Allie Carey, on the draw for Team USA. Nice to see them mix it up a little bit on the draw, give Syracuse some different looks. And that is Mercer resetting for Team USA and now back to Wills. And a dangerous pass by Wills and it's gonna be a great opportunity for Riley Donahue. Gonna try to take it herself and just a little misguided pass out wide. Now had an opportunity to probably sneak one by Wills instead a turnover and it goes back to Team USA. That's the second time we've seen her kind of not pull the trigger with an opportunity. So I, I'm sure she's gonna hear about it from her coaches, but love to see her make a turn to goal and take a shot. A nice stick checking, a little bit of body contact and then taken back by the orange. for open teammate, and now that is Mallory Vihar, one of the lone players from the Midwest, from Ohio. And again, you see this pressure come up the field that was nearly 20 seconds of Syracuse just trying to get the ball over the midline. They end up turning it over. Again, it's exhausting to play in this kind of pressure defense. 
Now Syracuse trying to find that equalizer before letting Team USA kind of run the score up as we saw yesterday in the second half against the University of Florida. So don't want to let the game get too far out of control. They do understand they're playing some of the best girls in the world. And now Syracuse dancing in and trying to sneak it in past Devin Wills, but some great stick checking inside of the eight meters and another infraction whistled. See, Donahue took that one to the goal and she gets fouled. She's gonna get a penalty shot here, so I'm sure she heard it from her teammates. Good to see her turn. She's a great shooter and a lefty. And Riley Donahue able to sneak it by Devin Wills. So right now, both Syracuse goals coming off of those uh, little misplayed uh, situations by Team USA that have cost them. And you see them now with a little bit of a huddle inside of Devin Wills, and it's 2-2. Two -two. The defense and the uh, ride that Team USA plays is a high risk, but also high reward. Um, so, you know, they will often get a free transition down to goal. You will often see them also turn the ball over. So I'm sure Devin probably pulled everybody in and said, let's get, our, let's get it together and, and keep the ball in our possession. So 2-2, two -two, we saw a very similar game play out last night. The University of Florida was tied 7-7, even nine minutes into the second half before Team USA really kind of found their stride uh, with a lot of these girls, especially with Trainer and Tumalo. Now the draw. And that one picked up by Daniela Trasco. Daniela Trasco, the assistant coach of the new Army women's lacrosse team. Um, they are start their first varsity season this year, so that's exciting. And team USA again, coming back behind the net, trainer. And a wide open angle, instead goes back to Allie Carey. A little underhand to Kelly Rabel and sneaks it through. Now Trainer's gonna maybe have an opportunity to take a shot. Gets in front a little underhand and that one, a nice save Great by save. Allie Murray. Great save, that was some pretty fancy uh, stick work from Trainer, but goalie for Syracuse kept right on the ball, good save from her. Again, we saw last night Kayla Trainer uh, able, able to put a shot on target from almost any angle. Uh, and saw it there with that little underhanded scoop shot. Pretty terrifying, and in, in terms of attacking, for those of us who've been around for a while, she sort of reminds you of the same style and skill and stick work of a Jen Adams, um, Hall of Fame player, Australian, um, University of Maryland, seven-time national champion. Kayla Trainer has ver a lot of the similar traits to Jen Adams. Laura Zimmerman. This is back, and now Team USA, and looking to take that one goal lead, and that one goes off the right post. Daniela da Trasco. Daniela Trasco is going to be carded here for a dangerous follow through. One of the rules in women's lacrosse, you take a shot, but your follow through hits a player in front of you. It's a cardable offense. So she'll take a two minute penalty for that. And so Team USA will be man down. And now Syracuse definitely going to be <laughs> looking to take advantage of uh, having one more person on the field than Team USA. But you can see Team USA not letting up the pressure. We talked about yesterday also some with the some of the cards and especially the two-minute not releasable, much like the, the fans that are familiar with the, the hockey sin bins. Uh, if the team that's a man up scores, you get the other player released. But Syracuse can add as many goals as they want right now with uh, having the uh, one-person advantage. Right, a, a big difference between NCAA play and the international play. The NCAA play, a goal releases a penalty. In this case, she'll serve the full two minutes. Now Rabel back out and swings back around and finds Allie Carey. Now Trainer and Tumalo, again the assistant coach and attacker for Syracuse. Tumalo just looking for an open pass and instead sends it out back near midfield. 
not surprising to see the U.S. slow it down just a bit. They're down a player. I think they'll try to keep some possession here and run out some of that uh, penalty time. And again, Syracuse being very, very strong and stubborn up and around the crease to make sure that they don't give Team USA any open lanes. You see Alex Aust just sitting outside the crease waiting possibly for an open pass. They don't want to let Syracuse with any kind of counterattack and they are just going to wait this one out and wait till number 23, Alyssa Leonard, is able to re-enter the field of play. And she's coming back on, so we're even now. So the U.S. will send a player over the restraining line. They're now 7v7, and you should see them take off from here. Trainer right back to Leonard. It's a cross check there. And we see Laura Zimmerman approach and gets a little bit of contact. And she took a little shove there. Nothing, nothing too big deal. Little fake by Tumalo. And now Leonard again, getting forced out, sent back. Alex Ost looking for a pass and sends it back out to Kelly Rabel. Similar to what you saw last night, you really seen the U.S. team try to work these corners, the top of the eight, trying to draw a shooting space penalty on Syracuse, and if not, to be able to try to find the open player. But Syracuse doing a tremendous job of not letting them get around that corner. A little bit of tripping, a little bit of contact. Jen Russell giving it back up to Syracuse and back to the goalie, Allie Murray. Yeah, Tumalo took a pretty good shot there. She was slow to get up, but she uh, seems to be recovering okay. Now quickly down the side, Natalie Wallen, a freshman from Waxhaw, North Carolina, and winning a little bit of a foot race down the near side and allowing Syracuse to set up outside of the 12. But you can see Team USA, that high pressure outside and not giving Syracuse any looks. Big shot, nice underhanded scoop and score. And what a goal by number 12, Nicole Levy, a freshman from East Islip, New York. And an impressive throw of the ball into the back of the neck and sneaks it back by Devin Wills. You could see Devin Wills as she approached her teammates kind of give the my bad sign. She was a little bit off her angle there. That ball snuck in on her stick side. That's typically a save that you see Devin make. Nice shot by Levy, but uh, something Devin Wills at this, at this point should come up with. 17-50 so remaining in the first half, and Syracuse regained the lead. Not dissimilar to what we saw last night, a little bit of a slow start for the U.S. We'll see what, what happens. This typically is the point in the half where they either start to score a lot. Uh, that's, what, that's what we saw last night was them sort of take off in the, in the later part of the half. Again, that ball just snuck over, stick side high for Devin Wills. That's typically a shot she comes up with. But good shot by Levy. In Syracuse, the more that they continue to lead Team USA, will feel that momentum and try and carry that as long as they can, knowing that Team USA uh, obviously has another 18 girls that uh, came in with fresh legs uh, yesterday against the University of Florida. A little bit of, a, of an unfair advantage, but obviously Team USA having the priority of this uh, competition, uh, needing to make their cuts before they take their uh, European tour, and that one whistled dead. Yep. Not such a bad foul in the midfield. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to foul in the midfield to slow down this momentum. You certainly don't want to get Team USA in a man-up situation, and you might see Syracuse foul intentionally in the midfield to slow them down. And Alyssa Leonard being told to go back a little bit to the spot of the infraction, just fighting her way through the midfield. Back to Schwartzman. Now Kayla Trainer back to Leonard, and that one into the stick, and nice save by Allie Murray. And Syracuse quickly goes back on the offensive. Good take there. Uh, good look at a sh not the best shot. Good save by Allie Murray. Um, 
Here you'll see Devin Wills come up with a ground ball. She's so valuable outside of the goal. She almost acts like an extra defender for the U.S., which allows them to you know, institute the ride that they do. Now Marie McCool saw her with a few goals last night. Marie McCool, one of two college sophomores trying to vie for a spot on this U.S. squad. She's young, she's very talented, and uh, good to see her out there. And another foul whistled against Syracuse. See that flag on this flag. flag. Yep. You often hear the official, I don't know if you can hear it from here, you hear the official say flag when they raise it so the players know that there's a delayed penalty. And now this will give Alyssa Leonard free approach to Allie Murray. And tries to sneak it by, but Syracuse keeps it at a 3-2 advantage. Great backup of that shot by Kayla Trainer getting to the corner, getting the ball back for her team. That's a smart play. That's an excellent defense again, just outside of the crease by the orange. Stuck in trying to get by and hey, another <laughs> foul whistle against Syracuse. And you can hear the, the Syracuse fans not happy with that call at all. You will certainly know when Syracuse fans are not in favor of a call. Uh, that was a block there. I, I don't think we'll get a replay, but we're pretty clear block. You're going to put Sarah Bullard, Duke University grad, in a spot you don't want to see Sarah Bullard in. And she sends it high and out, so Team USA will retain the ball, but again, still down 3-2. to two. You're starting to see a little frustration set in for Team USA. They've taken a couple high, couple wide shots. Team USA again, that Marie McCool trying to find some open space and being forced back out. And trying to take a hard angle on it is Michelle Tumalo and unable to sneak it by. And it looks like that's going to be awarded to Syracuse. Again, you might see Michelle Tumalo just ahead of her at the end, but the possession goes to the player closest to the ball when it crosses the line. In that case, it was the Syracuse player. Now Syracuse looking to add to their advantage and catches Devin Wills off her line and just missing wide right. Another nice try for Syracuse, but they will retain possession and this will be Ella Thorpe Sending it back in for the orange. Just under 14 minutes remain. A nice little pass and shoot, but again, just wide of Devin Wills, and Syracuse will have an opportunity to try again. Syracuse is keeping this U.S. team defense very busy. That, the errant pass going and finding its way into the stick of Marie McCool, who's got plenty of room to run. Yeah. Approaching inside the eight and then taking it back out. Schwartzman. Now behind the net, Trasco has it knocked away, juggles it to herself, able to retain possession for Team USA and now Alex Aust up top, trying to get a shot on and out. And that will stick with Team USA, as Alyssa Leonard was there when the ball went out. And Team USA has not scored in 13 minutes, so one of their longer scoring droughts. Again, I think they're pressing just a little bit hard. You know, it's it's difficult when you're trying to make a roster, you're trying to make things happen, you may be pushing a little bit too hard. And the expectation from Ricky is that you'll play in his system. Um, and that can be tough when you're trying to, you know, stand out from the crowd here. So again, I think they just need to settle down a little bit, do, do what they need to do, run their offense, and, and they should be fine. 
Sarah Bullard just with that fancy backhanded flick and again just over Team USA again being fiercely guarded by Syracuse. Aust behind the net. Now Trasco trying to send it back over and taken away by Syracuse. Now running down again, that is Erica Bott. Again, this is going to be a scoring chance for Syracuse and probably the longest shot that we have seen taken. Uh, didn't see really any outside of the 12-meter the area last night. Uh, that, that one coming just on the other side of midfield and trying to catch Devin Wills off, and that one able to sneak in. And again, it's Riley Donahue finding the back of the net and sneaking it by Devin Wills, and now Team USA trailing 4-2. to two. As you're making your way to transition Syracuse down the field, it's very tempting. You see Devin playing another player outside of the goal, and you think, hey, I can try to take that shot. But she's very quick to recover. She can get back pretty quickly. But in that case, they caught, caught her off just a little bit. Great feed inside to Donahue. And the assist to Majorana. Again, an excellent, excellent play and fantastic defense by Syracuse to set up that charge. Yeah, I mean, the tendency when you're playing a team like the U.S. where there are multiple players who can score is to double the ball right away. But they've been very disciplined about playing man-to-man -man defense and allowing their players to you know, play defensively without giving up too much. So I think that's part of the reason you're seeing the U.S. struggle um, to score goals because there's really nobody who's wide open. As we prepare for the draw, 10-35 remaining. That one. <laughs> it's an empty stick check. Can't check a player's stick when the ball is not in it. So Team USA will be awarded possession and quickly, again, trying to crawl out of this two-goal hole that they are in right now. And that one sails wide. and An unforced turnover by the U.S. there to give the ball back to Syracuse. Not what you want to see when you just made a good – Turnover on the other end, and now you turn it over on your end. Something I know drives Coach Ricky Freed crazy. Now you can see Team USA pressing high in that Syracuse zone. Yep, stepped out of bounds there. Great job by Allie Carey to force that player out of bounds. Didn't see too much out of bounds with the players with the ball last night against Florida. I believe that might have been even the first call. Official was in good position there, able to make that call. Now this Laura Zimmerman trying to sneak through and an excellent save by Murray. Murray's having a solid first half. And Syracuse, again, quick on the attack, sends that one. Far and Devin Wills, <laughs> you see, like you mentioned, playing defender. Not too many goalies you see in lacrosse that can, you know, win a foot race against a midfielder. Devin Wills is one of them. And Devin Wills awarded the ball afterwards, so very aware of where she was on the field. And now Team USA. Again, that's a good foul there by Syracuse. It stops what was an easy transition for the U.S. Not that you want to encourage fouling, but sometimes it makes sense. And uh, Team USA, again, down two goals. Matches the biggest deficit they've faced. Rabel gets it into Austin. Aust finds the back of the net on the assist from Kelly Rabel and a very well-designed Move outside of the crease, and Team USA is able to get one back. Kelly Rabel brings her teammates in here. She is also one of the senior members of this team, having played in a couple World Cups before. I think she's taking a minute here to calm her teammates down and remind them there's a lot of time in this game, and they don't need to push more than, more than necessary. Settle down here. Look for the open looks. They will eventually be there. And we'll take a look at the replay that set that last goal up. See Kelly Rabel. 
And gets a little bit of a shove and then a perfect pass and reception to Alex Aust and then just quickly turns and sneaks it by Allie Murray. Alex Aust caught her defender staring at the ball. A little bit of a backdoor cut there. Now the draw, 8.21 remaining. So you see there on the draw, the ball is placed between the two sticks at the tops of the sticks, and the players must move up and away. And now Syracuse going to be looking to get back to a two-goal advantage. Able to be scooped up, that is Mia DiBello, sophomore from Syracuse. And now you see the attackers for Team USA pressing high, trying to frustrate that midfield of the orange and doing so very successfully. Again, just the amount of time it is taking Syracuse to try to clear the ball, it, it really is an exhausting defense and I'm not surprised to see them commit a couple of turnovers. And an excellent save by Murray again, <laughs> Aust with a wide open net. And Murray just diving to her right and able to get a stick on it and knock it away. Allie Murray, a bit of a feast or famine goalie. If she gets on, she is can be unstoppable. She's made some great saves in this first half, kept her team ahead here. That was a tremendous save. Alex Aust should be kicking herself a little bit with an open cage there, though. And another shot and a save by Allie Murray, but in the process, Laura Zimmerman goes down just outside of the crease. She took a pretty good, uh, pretty good hit there from uh, Devin Parker after the shot. So we'll get a free position shot here. A little slow to get up. So a chance for USA to come level again. Again, some people may wonder why she there. There she goes, right on the eight meter line. And Solid able to shot by Zimmerman. Able to sneak it by as Laura Zimmerman and game tied with 6.30 to go in the first half, 4-4. So very similar scoring as far as the amount of goals that we saw in the first half last night with the University of Florida. But also uh, something we talked about was how impressive Florida was last night. And Syracuse right now, you know, some of these girls know that they're playing in front of Team USA coaches and definitely trying to impress. I think first and foremost are trying to impress their own coach, Gary Gate. There's a lot of roster spots open for him this year. I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. He's got seven freshmen in here. He's got a grad stu uh, student goalie who came in as well to back up Allie Murray. Um, so I, I think they're looking to impress their own coach to try to find a spot on their team. But certainly Team USA always has eyeballs on Syracuse, a national semifinalist last year, lost to Maryland in the semifinal, always in the top five. So good, solid team. And the draw goes for Team USA. A little bit of contact and back in Syracuse attacking zone. That goes out, but we'll stick with Team USA. International rules allow for five people from each team on the draw, which is different than what these players see in college where there are only three allowed. So it may be a little bit of an adjustment for them to get used to so many players being on the circle. Maybe the reason why you see a little bit of sloppy play there. Now quickly the other way, Team USA Trying to take the lead for the second time today. And that one just poked away in wide of Allie Murray. And you see Kayla Trainer back on looking for some open space and going to try to possibly take a shot on and able to sneak oh. one by and just wide. <laughs> Kayla Trainer fought for every inch of that and just dribbles by Allie Murray. Kayla Trainer broke the ankles of her defender there, but Allie Murray again there to save it. Unfortunately, Syracuse was off sides in that situation, so ball's gonna go back to the team, team USA. A mental error there by Syracuse. No reason to be offside there in a settled situation. So now Daniela Trasco, and she's able to just sneak one to the right of Allie Murray. A very hard angle for a Trasco, <laughs> but able to give Team USA the advantage. Allie Murray kicking herself, I'm sure, a little bit on that one. Just stepped off her pipe, maybe, lo maybe lost her concentration for a second. A Trasco saw her step off and put that ball in the inside pipe. 
And we'll take a look at that restart after the offside and saw just a very awkward shot straight on from the, the top release. You know, we see shots from every angle, um, but re very rarely from coming from that angle would you see someone go over the top with their stick. Uh, we saw Kayla Trainer last night doing very many sidearm shots from the same angle. Uh, and that one just a very, very fantastic shot by Murray. Or Trasco, excuse me. Yep, a Trasco, a quick shifty attacker. She can shoot from anywhere. She's an excellent shooter. Great placement on that shot. But again, you know, not, not a goal Allie Murray wants to give up or not one you usually see her give up. And a little bit of haze here in Bradenton. The sun's starting to peek out a little bit, something that we did not see any of yesterday. <laughs> Happy to see the sunshine. <laughs> Now Sarah Bullard running down quickly for Team USA. Back out, that is Alex Aust. The trainer sends it back up top. A strong shove. Syracuse player tried to take a charge there, not a bad idea, but her teammate was in shooting space. Gonna put Leonard on the eight meter. And Alyssa Leonard, again, the graduate of Northwestern with a chance to sneak one by, goes under, faked the shot from up top and tried to slide it under Allie Murray. But that time, Katie Schwartzman gets her second of the day with four minutes and three seconds remaining. And now Team USA with their biggest lead so far today at 6-4. I don't know whether we'll get a replay or not, but what you'll notice is when someone like Kayla Trainer gets the ball, everybody turns their head towards her. And what happens then is a smart attacker, Katie Schwartzman's gonna go right behind her. Defender, you'll see everybody turn towards her. Player not watching, open in the middle. You saw Great all pass. <laughs> you saw all eyes as you mentioned on the replay. Everybody was staring right at Kayla Trainer, and then that gave uh, Katie Schwartzman, an opportunity, an unabated shot to the net. Uh, so that is how Team USA takes a two-goal lead. And now we have our first timeout of the day. And take this time to remind you that U.S. Lacrosse would like to thank the sponsors of the U.S. National Teams program. Their financial support helps Team USA serve as ambassadors for the support while chasing their gold medal teams. Nike Lacrosse is the official apparel and footwear provider to the U.S. National Teams program. Brine, STX, and Under Armour are the official equipment suppliers to the U.S. Women's National Team program. Greenfields is an official partner of the U.S. National Teams program. Sweat X is an official partner of the U.S. National Teams program. And Nationwide is an official partner of the U.S. National Teams program. Also, don't forget, you can also help support the U U.S. National Teams program. Consider making a donation to support the red, white, and blue. Just visit uslacrosse.org. It's also where you can find these games live streaming. I believe they will also be archived on the U.S. Lacrosse YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you that may be tuning in late and wanted to see the rest of the first half, or if you wanted to check out the uh, Team USA versus Florida game last night also, Reminder, we will have the men's competitions scheduled for 11. We may be starting them slightly later just because of the rescheduling of this contest. But definitely looking forward to seeing a completely different style of lacrosse uh, for the next few hours here. I'm sure the, uh, the fans in Bradenton and the, the fans that are going to be looking uh, online as well or in for a real treat big day of lacrosse here uh, looking forward to the men's game as well D defending national champion denver will take on our men's national team u19 men for the u.s taking on u19 team for canada i don't think you can get too many better teams men's teams out on the field so a good day for u.s lacrosse a good day for team usa so after that timeout again just over four minutes remaining and we saw once Team USA started finding their groove last night, it was very tough to slow them down. Smart time out there by Gary Gate, just to calm his team down a little bit. Certainly don't want to get into a situation where the US team goes on a six, seven goal run. So nice to break it up here, give them a little bit of encouragement. They've played a great first half. Um, so I'm sure he just he said to them, settle down a little bit. Let's go back to what we were doing well. And this will be Erica Bott and Alyssa Leonard 
on the draw. And a good win by Bott, but Team USA able to take it back. A little bit of contact, so. Nice job coming out with that, Alice Mercer. It, it takes a little bit of courage to go through that kind of traffic and come out with the ball, so I've seen her do that a couple times. Now Team USA looking to add to their total. That is Alyssa Leonard. Swung out wide to Alex Austin, now finds Trainer behind the net. Kind of feigns the pass before getting it back out top to Schwartzman. And a nice interception. That by number five, Haley McDonald. Haley McDonald was reading the eyes of Katie Schwartzman, saw that ball come in, left her attacker, and was able to pick off that pass, step in front of Kayla Trainer. It's really what you need to do to mark her is to step in front of her. She's a big attacker, tall, strong, and you got to get in front of her. Right, Team USA recycling back up top and trying to find another nice save by Murray. Good shot by Taylor Cummings. But a better save by number 89. Not a bad take there by Taylor Cummings. A good shot. Murray got a stick on it again. Team USA. Back up top. Schwartzman just missing that initial pass. Able to scoop it back up and has room to run and tries to put a shot on and she does. Katie Schwartzman with her third of the day. Two minutes and 30 seconds remain. Katie Schwartzman's nickname on this Team USA team is Shorty. There is nothing short about her game. She may be small, but she has a rocket of a shot. She is shifty, quick, very smart attacker, and she can just destroy you from the top. Again, a graduate of Maryland back in 2013. Calls Maryland home out in Sykesville. And a very impressive showing so far last night and tonight. Makes it 7-4 for Team USA as the instant replay comes up and saw it, missed the first opportunity before dodging and then just a little bit of a defensive lapse by the Syracuse side and gave her an open lane and a wide open shot at the net. That's a tough part about playing Team USA. You know, you've got your attention on Tumalo, you've got attention on Trainer, and all of a sudden the Schwartzman decides, I'm going to score three goals now. And the draw now for Syracuse and an opportunity to chip back in. It's a foul, a little bit of a push there. As they get <laughs> near that far sideline, you can hear the Syracuse fans trying to uh, encourage uh, their girls on the field and very, very vocally. Always, always. They're some of my favorite fans. They travel well. They are highly supportive of their team. Creates a good environment for the girls. They love playing for this team and they love playing for their fans. Here in the Gulf Coast of Florida, this is considered snowbird season, so many of them <laughs> Call Sarasota and Bradenton their home for a good few months out of the year because nobody wants to be in upstate New York with snow. Not a fun time to be in the Syracuse area. So I, I don't think you got any complaints from the Syracuse players or fans having to make a trip to uh, Florida in January. And just in the mid to high 70s, Possibly clipping 80 degrees today, not to rub it in for those of you watching <laughs> from the oft frigid northeast. Got another offsides penalty here, so they're going to bring the player back onside. They'll put a player behind for the foul and then bring another player back onside. It's always a fun dynamic because normally when officials call on fractions in most other sports, there's a little bit of a, a Congress where you, you try to plead your case, but in lacrosse, it's everybody just freezes and it <laughs> doesn't really have a, a chance to plead their case on the calls. And as we get that, another goal for Team USA, number 25, Marie McCool. And now Team USA has Syracuse doubled up. It's 8-4. 
Yeah, you know, for the most part, players don't really protest too much. What you will see, though, on the sidelines, certainly Gary and uh, Ricky Freed will let officials know when they disagree with something that they've had to call. Um, typically, that happens along the sideline with the players. But, you know, for the most part, these officials know what they're doing. They make the right call. Players just kind of go with it and, and move on from there. And you saw right after that offside call the – Nice pass and a better shot effort by Marie McCool, but a great pass by Allie Carey to set that up. And saw McCool just dodge a few defenders, dance her way through the 12 and the eight, and then finally putting it into the back of the net pass to Allie Murray. So eight four. Minute 18 remaining. Again, if I were Syracuse, might look for a little bit of possession here just to kind of get out of this half with no more damage done. But the U.S. team defense really doesn't allow you to do that too much. You see Taylor Gate just struggling just to find some open space to, to control the ball and set up their offense. See right now Alice Mercer just attached to Taylor Gate's hip, not letting her get any open vision. But instead that one into the net of Devin Wills with ease. Easy save for Devin Wills. Again, that's what Team USA defense looking to do. You saw Kelly Rabel turn her hips to force that shot from the weak side with left-handed shot there. Low angle shot, exactly what Devin Wills wants to see. <laughs> you see Devin Wills out near midfield just kind of toying with that. She would shoot the ball if she could. Um, international play, the goalies can't cross half field. That's different than the NCAA. And a tough call there. <laughs> Takeaway by Hallie Majorana, and she was going to have an an open look at the net. <laughs> Again, Syracuse fans will let you know what they thought of that. So we're under 20 seconds remaining. It looks like Team USA may try and get one more charge. It's not got wide, and now Rabel to try and get one last shot and poked away. And that is how the first half will end. Team USA 8, Syracuse Orange 4. A very, very good half again going point for point up until 4-4. Syracuse even had a 4-2 advantage back with 10 minutes and 35 seconds remaining. But uh, unfortunately, Team USA just kind of flexing their muscle a little bit and kicking it into another gear that Syracuse just wasn't ready for. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's tough there. You, it, it, This is a team that just keeps coming at you. And you, again, in, in other games, they may play teams where there are two or three players that are really solid that you can shut down. In this case, there are 18 players, 36 players, that are the best of where they come from. That's a very hard task for a college team to keep up with. And uh, I think Syracuse did a great job in that first half and, and lucky to get out of it at 8-4. We will step aside briefly. We'll have second half action in just about 10 minutes. U.S. Lacrosse is committed to helping youth programs around the country thrive. We recently visited with the Oakland Lacrosse Club in California, a program that makes a tremendous difference in young children's lives, thanks in part to support from U.S. Lacrosse and the First Stick Program. One of the best things my coach teaching me was never stop like going to my dream, even if somebody tells me to stop, because that's my dream and I have to keep going forward. My name is Ariam. I go to Westlake Middle School. I'm an eighth grader. I moved from Eritrea, it's located in Africa. I came last year. I was a little scary, especially the first day of school because at that time I didn't know how to speak English. The people in Oakland, some of them care about Oakland, some of them don't. Some of my family members care a lot about Oakland. They love it because they live here so they want to take care of it. Lacrosse was totally new to me. The first time I held a lacrosse stick, it was kind of weird because I didn't know what hand to put it in or how to catch or throw. I remember it was on November 17, 2014. After school, students were playing lacrosse and I looked over, I was so impressed how they played. And I really want to try it, so I went to the coach and asked him 
if I can play? And he said, yeah, so I tried lacrosse and I really liked it. My name's Kevin Kelly, I'm the executive director and founder of Open Lacrosse Club. You know, when you speak about our, the kids in our program, you know, there's a number of different challenges that they're facing. There's, you know, definitely violence in the city and all, you know, the vast majority of our kids are impacted in some way by the violence in the city. Food insecurity, so not always having consistent meals or not always having access to healthy meals. And I think where that really impacts our kids as they come into our program is it takes a while to build trust with them because in so many areas of their life, they have to just kind of think about like, how are they surviving? So that just creates a, a certain mindset. For us, what's really important in our pro Oakland Cross Club program is setting a place where they feel safe and that they can build trusting relationships with their coaches. And once you can kind of build those relationships, you're able to get to know the real kid and the real kid is able to express themselves in the way that they want and be who they want. The thing that impressed me was the way they move their sticks, the way they work together to make passes like shoot, score. So it was like really impressed. I can see the hard work on their face, so it just pushed me more. RM is exceptional. When she came to us, uh, she had just moved here. I think she'd been in the country for three months from Eritrea. Um, she spoke very little English. Her parents just didn't know how to tap into some of the resources, so we made sure that we connected her parents and Ariam with her teachers uh, to make sure that she got some extra support. Ariam came out here. She had never played lacrosse before. She had seen it in PE. She got really excited about it, and she's one of our best defenders today. We do our homework together, um, and our coach help us know our missing assignments so we can get our points higher. And when we do our homework, because our coaches help us, it's a lot more easier, and we listen to music, so it's fun. I wasn't doing so good with school last year, so Coach Kelly and Coach Connor set up a way for me to come to study hall. It was a pretty simple formula with us. It was just like, well, let's just have you come to study hall four days a week. You seem to really like one of our coaches, Coach Connor. If you worked with him each day, would you be fine with that? And he's like, yeah. He encourages me to do my homework and then complete it, and he helps me make sure everything is correct. He came every day and worked, you know, he'd work an hour, hour and a half until his homework was done. And the reward he got was he got to go out and do wall ball with Coach Connor. That was like, the, you know, you get your homework done, you get to play more lacrosse. Getting good grades is easier when I'm with Oakland Lacrosse because they, I have people to help me, and before I didn't really have anyone to help me. And I think what really where it, the light bulb hit him is when he hit the end of the, the semester last year and his grades had gone up pretty significantly. And you can see it just kind of grew his confidence so that when he came into the school year this year, I'm um, like, hey, are we still gonna meet four days a week? He's like, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like it was worth putting all in the time. And I think it, cause it shows off a lot through my grades. I think the other thing where you're seeing like that impact is on the field now, he's taking much more of a leadership role, uh, kind of instructing the new players in study hall when kids are being too loud or off task. He'll tell them like, nope, that's not how you do it. He's taking that confidence and putting it into other areas of his life. And that's exactly what our program is designed to do. I think on the lacrosse field now is facing off because I feel more confident in doing it that now that I've got help with it. As a kid, a kid needs to feel safe to develop, right? We can't grow when we're on the defensive. So a lot of our kids are on guard. Why? Because the world they live in is not safe. So the first thing I need to do is, and that's what our culture is all about, is allow them to take that mask off. Allow them to relax. I know when my kids show up, they have a frown on their face. I know I can get that kid to smile with a couple things. Always high fives, always hugs, always showing them positive touch, positive words. Uh, and that's the best way to break their mood and get them to, grow, to let go of that survival mindset, to get that growth state of mind that we preach all the time here. And that starts with unconditional love. And so from the day one they show up, we say, hey, if you're great at this or if you're not, we still got your back, we still got love for you. Love someone and help someone no matter what they look like. Or if someone can't pick up a ground ball or misses a shot, don't laugh at them, help them to get better. It makes me think that the coaches are caring because they help us and they take time out of their day to come teach us things. It's kind of, I leave in other word, like I forgot that people are around me. So I just run through all of, all of them. It's real, it, feel, it feels really great. The long-term vision is to have that sixth to 12th grade pipeline. And so what we wanna do is continue with our middle school model and the ac academic support and expand from where we're at Westlake Middle School. And in the next three years, we'd like to be at you know, three to four different middle schools. Additionally, we wanna make sure that we're also supporting our kids after they, they graduate from eighth grade and continue on to high school. Because we don't wanna just have our kids graduate and then leave them, but high school's a really challenging time. Oakland Cross has given me the opportunity to turn my pain into my passion. 
If I didn't have Oakland Lacrosse, I don't think my grades would be so good. Oakland Lacrosse is a really, really good place to go after school. It actually helps you make your dreams. They support me a lot. They're like my family. They always push me to do more things, which helps me in my school. And I don't think without them, I would have a good grade or learn English or have more fun. The support U.S. Lacrosse gave us, um, I think specifically in those beginning years, like the first stick grant, just to be able to have, you know, equipment for, not worry about having equipment for two teams, um, was big because equipment's such a prohibitive cost. And so just to know that you had kind of had that security, like, all right, we got equipment, now we can worry about, you know, transportation, food, and all the other things that we want to provide for our kids. I think that was the biggest help and support of our, our program. We would not be where we are today without the help of U.S. Lacrosse. U.S. Lacrosse was that seed money that got us off the ground. It was the original equipment that we got to, to put sticks in the hands of our kids and to do the e outreach that we do. Ultimately, you're giving to programs that are like, like Oakland Lacrosse. You are supporting kids that are in the most need of high quality coaches and high quality programs. One of the best things my coach teaching me was never stop like going to my dream, even if somebody And welcome back to IMG Academy Field. Ryan Sudol and Melissa Coyne getting ready to bring you second half action between Team USA and Syracuse. USA with the 8-4 advantage against Syracuse was playing a, a very valiant first half before Team USA started pulling away in uh, the, the waning moments of the first half. But Melissa, what did you see from Syracuse that makes you believe that they might be able to stay in this game in the second half? Well, they have played tremendous defense. They've been able to keep the U.S. team from mostly from open looks. Um, Ali, uh, Ali Murray having a tremendous first half with some great saves. It's tough to rely on your goalkeeper to, to sort of save you from the game. She did that in the first half. I would expect that Gary probably told them at halftime they need to step it up a little bit and not rely so heavily on her. So I expect to see a little bit better discipline defense from Syracuse in the second half, but good things from them in the first half. And we saw last night after scoring only seven goals in the, or five goals in the first half, Team USA finishing the game 19 to eight. So de depending on if uh, Team USA goes with their reserve plan like they did uh, last night where they had the, again, having a chance to see all of the players. And it looks like they may be doing a little bit of that. Um, just trying to see more players before having to make those cuts as we see Devin Wills is going to sub out in favor of Kaylee Waters. Yeah, not surprising to see Team USA do that. They want to put on a good show. They want to make a good showing. But at the end of the day, the purpose of this weekend is Ricky Freed can come away with 24 players for that tour. So everybody's going to get a chance here and get a lot of minutes. Um, not surprising to see a different lineup come out here. These girls are, uh, you know, these are the best players in the world. So need to see them, need to give them some minutes, and uh, looking forward to seeing what they do here. So now we see uh, Maggie Bill step up for the second half draw along with Alexa Radzovich. And 30 minutes away from another fantastic lacrosse competition. Again, don't forget 11 o'clock, we'll have the defending champion, University of Denver men taking on the national team. and and just talking about it a little bit while we were watching the video from the first stick program about just how fast some of them can uh, throw the ball. And it, I know some of the shots you can see the fairly new IMG Academy Fieldhouse um, with some hurricane proof windows, but have not had a chance to test if they are lacrosse lacro ball proof yet. So hopefully uh, IMG Academy won't have to uh, figure that out the hard way, but they have put up some of those protective nets uh, to prevent any kind of uh, infraction like that. Probably a smart idea from the staff at U.S. Lacrosse to make sure that ball wall's there. Uh, we certainly want to be invited back to IMG, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll see some real firepower from these guys, uh, mostly shooting 90, 100, 110 miles an hour. So they can really let it go um, and always want to be careful. We've got spectators walking back behind there, so good to put that up. And I've seen USA trying to Sneak one by and they get it through. And the first goal of the second half belongs to Team USA. 
And Becky Lynch, the graduate of the University of North Carolina back in 2012, getting credit for her first goal of the game, 28-49, remaining in this contest. Great look there by uh, Alyssa Murray again, another product of Syracuse. Great feed there. bit of pushing and shoving on the circle. It's good to see them, you know, competing for each other and against each other. So many of these girls play together, know each other, have been teammates or coaching each other. So nice to see them uh, compete. Got a foul there in international play. You can't take a swing over the head even if you don't make contact. Again, that's different than the NCAA rules. And you see the <laughs> officials moving and redirecting. Again, the Syracuse players, the rules. A little bit of creeping there. Yeah. You can get away with a little bit. Everybody tries to get away with a little bit. But, you know, every once in a while you got an official who's paying attention and uh, bring you back there. Syracuse, it looks like we've seen. They've actually subbed in some fresh legs too. So definitely a different look. So. Basically two completely different teams that we're seeing on the field right now. Not surprising to see Syracuse do that. In some ways, this is an audition for them for their season to show what they have to their head coach, Gary Gate. And uh, good to see all these girls get an opportunity to play. Also, Syracuse bringing the largest roster of, of anybody, um, well over uh, right around 40 players. So uh, definitely well-traveled and, uh, again, getting ready for their NCAA uh, collegiate season so it'll be interesting to see how these two different squads uh, even though they're wearing the same jerseys they, they're definitely not the same players that we saw in the first half nope uh, Gary tends to carry a, bi a big roster several other teams I, I can remember do that as well North Carolina Florida carries a big roster as well um, you know there are lots of opportunities on these teams and he's got a new team uh, with some new players on it so Good to see him getting them in there and getting them some minutes and experience. What better experience can you get matching up against the U.S. team? So Now Alyssa Murray just drops that one back off for Maggie Bill. He mentioned last night also a soccer player at the University of North Carolina. Great athlete, very fit, very consistent. She's a top player for the University of North Carolina, and she's making a very good case to, to make it to that 24 for the U.S. team. Team USA trying to find some open space, and that one poked away. Looks like Allie Murray is still the goalkeeper for the Orange and fighting for it, and it's going to be awarded to Syracuse. Right, so you see there the U.S. team's player uh, player's stick extended into the goal circle, which in international play is illegal, so they'll give the ball to the goalie there. And you will just... Whip it out in that one to Ella Hogan, sophomore from Rochester, New York. Now Syracuse trying to build from the back, but that, again, defensive pressure by Team USA, not allowing them to get through the midfield and trying to wind up and able to sneak one by. That is like number 12, Nicole Levy. Again, the freshman from East Islip. That is her second goal. It's 9-5. Syracuse still in it. Levy, one of the players that Gary Gate pointed out to me yesterday as someone he's hoping will make an impact for the team this year. It looks like she's well on her way to doing that. Again, we mentioned Devin Wills no longer on the field. Kaylee Waters coming in, and we'll see. Certainly, it's hard to replace a Devin Wills, but Kaylee Waters is a good second choice. University of North Carolina. Um, plays splits time actually with another keeper at the University of North Carolina, but Kaylee was the IWLCA first team All-American uh, goalie of the year last year and a first team All-American. So no slouch herself, a very good player, a solid player, good outside the cage and very quick hands. And you saw there as Levy was approaching the crease, she did a little bit of a, uh, a flinch move that really caused Becca Block to open up that lane and Obviously, you don't want to get hit with a, a mall going any speed. It's uh, 
had an opportunity to pick one up on the side before. It's not something that you would want to get hit with. No, these players have played a long time. They know when to get out of the way of the ball. The rules are designed so as not to create dangerous situations. You rarely see at this level players get hit with a ball. Um, they're just, they know what they're doing. They're very aware of their spacing. And the onus really is on the attacker not to take that shot if there's a defender in front of them. Um, so they, they respect that rule and, they, and they're good at making sure they don't injure their, their teammates or their opponents. And now a delayed call and that will be an opportunity for Syracuse. Two flags there, two officials caught her. So Lisa Rogers will have a reposition shot. Able to just try and sneak it by Waters. It stays with Syracuse. Kelly McPartland made a nice defensive play there, able to get a stick on that shot. And you see Kaylee Waters coming out of the area, but taken back away. So now a chance at an open net. They can just find an angle. Snuck away, and Team USA able to get it back. A dangerous situation, but nice awareness. And Morgan Stevens is able to Usher it back upfield for Team USA. Casey Pepperman, defender from the University of Maryland, did a great job there, knowing that her goalkeeper was out of the goal and making sure she kept that player in front of her and not able to get over the top for an open shot. Now we see Team USA again trying to cycle back around and some crisp passing, and we see Kelly McPartland. Trying to get a shot off, and that one will just track out of play. Expect to see some good things from McPartland. She is a very, very good player. Um, she's been a little bit under the radar this weekend, but I'd expect her to see her step it up here, kind of lead this, this second group here in the second half. I'm trying to find some open space, and that's Shannon Gilroy. It's a little bit of a check, and... Right. You'll see there, officials have very little tolerance for cross-checking. Uh, the defender there extended her arms fully to displace that attacker, so that's going to be an immediate call. Again, not something that we will <laughs> see called too much in the men's competitions <laughs> a little, la little later. The rule actually is written similarly in the men's, that if your hands are apart on the shaft of your stick and you make contact and actually displace a player, it is a cross check. And that's similar to the men's game, though you will see a bunch of pushing. You'll notice in the men's game, they do it with their hands together. Now Molly Stevens. One on one outside of the 12 and trying to again cycle around, finds Becky Lynch behind the net. That's a and great a feed. Beautiful feed, finds the stick of Brooke Griffin who just has to lower her hands and the ball just creeps out of her stick and into the back of the net. And Team USA again with the this five goal, goal advantage. Brooke Griffin, also a recent grad of the University of Maryland, um, someone that Ricky Freed pointed out as, as, as somebody he's taking a good look at. Um, she's got a lot of potential. She's able to get herself open and a great shooter, and you saw that there. And you see Lynch just flicks it out, and in one smooth motion, Brooke Griffin able to lower her stick and uh, <laughs> basically just kind of bounce it into the net, not even uh, getting possession at all, just forcing it very quickly and a nice assist by Lynch. A lot of trust in your teammate there. Lynch let that ball go before Griffin had really even made her cut, anticipating she would be there. And that shows great communication and teamwork between them. Just saw some mass substitutions from the U.S. women. And after the draw, Syracuse able to get possession back and, and five goals. The biggest advantage so far for Team USA. Syracuse showed to be a fairly resilient team early on. Doing a good job not letting this one get too far out of hand. See the official move everybody four meters away. And now Levy. Right now the top goal scorer along with Donahue for Syracuse, two goals apiece. Now a 
another whistle. We saw a little bit of frustration on the face of Hallie Majorana. Looked like she was trying to plead a case with one of the officials. Right, you've got too many players over the line. They were making an argument that they were not offsides. They are, in fact, offsides, and they have an extra player on the field. <laughs> so official took a second there to count. You can't have 13, just 12. So the Syracuse players counted on their offensive end, counted seven players, thinking they're not offsides, but they actually had eight. So extra player on the field. Team USA get possession here. And the official's just having a... Slide conference. Probably trying to determine who has to go back on sides and where they're going to place this ball for the penalty because the actual penalty is not only off sides but having too many players on the field. So trying to determine here where that ball should go and who should go back over the line. And Team USA quickly working their way back down the field. Maggie Bill passes out to her left and then ball just kind of trickling behind the net. Team USA looking for another open opportunity. And that one shot off the post. Denied for Team USA. Impressive look and just hitting the post square and then bouncing away. Seen a couple post shots from Team USA today. Great take by Maggie Bill. Unfortunate it hit the post. Got an offsides again by Syracuse. Crutchfield will restart. And now Lynch looking for some space inside the eight. Another foul called against the Orange. <laughs> Very eager to stop this free <laughs> position play. And snuck wide right. Brooke Griffin unable to find the back of the net. And a whistle blows. The goal scored, but not going to count. You get a shooting space call there. The shooting space is the most important call in the women's game. It protects players from being in the path of the ball. Sometimes the frustration is you see the ball being scored there, and then you hear the whistle for the penalty. But in reality, the foul has happened before the shot. It's just the whistle is delayed. And so Maggie Bill, that time again, putting a shot wide. So 18 minutes and 30 seconds remain. Team USA will keep the ball in their attacking zone. Looking for some space and a nice goal there by number 17, Alyssa Murray. Very impressive shot, was able to cut back and we'll see on the replay, just create her own space and then finally able to sneak it into the back of the Syracuse net. Yeah, it looks like Alyssa, Alyssa sorry, Allie Murray, the goalkeeper for Syracuse got caught a little bit high there. Um, she may need to back herself up a little bit. She was quite a distance outside the crease or at the top of the crease. As she comes around, you'll see her step way up, get herself off her angle a little bit. A great cut back by Alyssa Murray. And then finally just snuck it under and gives Team USA an 11-5 advantage. Again, also a Syracuse grad is number 17 for Team USA back in 2014 graduated. So played with some of these girls. I'm sure some of the seniors probably remember. Oh, I don't think they forget her. She's quite a player. Always uh, a fun atmosphere when you get to play against your, your own team and you see sometimes even in those 
recreational alumni games among all sports, just kind of the uh, the extra oomph you get when you get a chance to beat up on some of the uh, the young blood coming through your program. For sure. I mean, I think that's part of the reasons why college teams like Syracuse and Florida in the past, Northwestern, North Carolina, have been eager to attend this event. It's, it's a showcase of the best in the world. What better preparation for your season than to play Team USA? And from a from a USA perspective, you get to see the best players in the country who could potentially be your next roster stars um, in this event. So we've always had a great, great team show up for this event, a great opportunity to showcase the best of talent in the women's game. That possession being traded and Syracuse able to win it back. That finds Haley McDonald. Great hustle all around the field from Kara Mupo. She's chasing the ball everywhere. Now Syracuse with an opportunity possibly to get at net and just a nice stick check gets away. You've got a cover there. In the girls game, you can't cover the ball with your stick if another player is trying to play the ball. It's a minor foul, so they'll back that up. Outside the 12 and they will clear just the penalty lane. So Natalie Wallen drop it back for Syracuse. Again, trailing 11-5, just over 16 minutes remain. Trying to create space and Team USA not allowing them. Poked away. Another whistle halts play. Kind of an un unlucky foul there. Courtney Waite was in good defensive position, just happened to catch her. Sorry, that's uh, Lucy DQ. And that's going to give Kelsey Van Otta a free position shot and sends it wide. And Good save by Waters. Kaylee Waters playing very well in net in Devin Wills' stead. Again, don't think anyone's expecting anyone to replace Devin Wills anytime soon on the on the national team, but it's nice to know that you have depth at one of the most important positions. It's important to develop uh, good goalkeeping. It's it's a different position than others on the field where you you know you can't replace them as easily or as quickly or as frequently during the game, but it, it will be important for Team USA to think in the future what's next after Devin Wills. And a shot taken goes wide and out of play. Of course, the Goalkeeping coach for Team USA, Jess wilk Strasburg, a several-time world champion goalie herself, probably the best goalkeeper ever to play the women's game, so they're not short on good coaching for their goalkeepers. Now the temperature warming a little bit in Bradenton. It started probably in the mid-70s and now in the high 70s, so as the sun comes out for these final few minutes of the second half, we'll see what kind of effect the heat has on these already tired girls. Again, no one expecting to play this early yesterday. These were this game scheduled for a five o'clock at night before uh, some nasty rain cells forced us to play the University of Florida game starting at 8.30. And then they opted to play this game at 8.30 in the morning. And a nice shot and a Beautiful play by Shannon Gilroy, able to create her own space and then find it and just sneak it in the top left corner. It's too bad the assist for that goal should go to Sloan Serpy, a tremendous play on the defensive end to box out her player. She draws the foul, she finds uh, Gilroy in the midfield and just a great smart play by a good defender. As we take a look and anytime the replay starts back in your own zone, you can tell it's gonna be a quick Quick run upfield. Just one little shove and able to find the back of the net. Beautiful play by Shannon Gilroy. Graduate of the University of Florida. Last year got to play against some of her old teammates as well. Yeah, Gilroy's a big loss for them. I talked to Mandy O'Leary after that game last night. You know, d d trying to fill her shoes is going to be difficult. She's a great vocal leader on the field. The U.S. squad is lucky to have her in the mix here. And the draw. Won by Syracuse. In 
possession being traded. One back, turnover to Team USA. A little bit of a stick poke to Kelly McPartland. Got plenty of room to run. Swipe taken, play whistled dead. Another opportunity for Team USA to extend their lead. And snuck through another athletic play by Alyssa Murray and just lunging to her left and the underhanded shot finds the back of the net behind Allie Murray. Alyssa Murray again caught her defender pretty flat-footed. Not an easy player to defend. Take a look at the replay. You see her sort of hesitate when she gets the ball, gets her defender to plant, and turns the corner. Only marked by one member of Syracuse and then just takes a sprint and underhands it, falls to her left and gets another goal. Her second of the day, it's 13-5 in favor of Team USA. Syracuse fighting for the draw and then flick back to the new goalkeeper for the US women's team, Liz Hogan. Again, a graduate of Syracuse, so back in 2011, so I'm sure none of these players remember her, but I'm sure they know the name. I think they all are well aware of who Liz Hogan is. She had a great career at Syracuse. She's an excellent goalie. She's very smart, uh, communicates well with her defense, accurate passer, um, good three solid goalies for the U.S. team. Team USA. And back on the offensive, just across midfield, midfield and Kelly McPartland. And a quick shot, and that one goes out. Like the effort by Molly Stevens, and one of the other University of Florida players scheduled to graduate next year in 2017. Back around behind the net. Set back up top. Beautiful setup and a beautiful goal. And Shannon Gilroy, again, last two goals by Team USA, scored while falling down. And Gilroy with 11 minutes and 57 seconds puts Team USA up 14 to five. Assistant number 36, Stephanie Lynch. So Gilroy, that's another good goal for her. It's a good time out here by Gary Gate. Things getting a little bit out of hand. I think his team's I'm getting a little seven. overwhelmed. Get them together, figure out what the game plan is here. I would expect to see him uh, talk to his defense about getting a little bit more help to the ball carrier. 11.57 remaining in the game. And again, for a while, early on for about the first 20 minutes or so, uh, almost the entire first half, we had a very, very tight contest between Team USA and uh, Syracuse uh, right up until, we were tied up until six minutes and 30 seconds remaining. And then Team USA scoring uh, five unanswered goals after being down, or six unanswered goals after being down four to two. Uh, just basically now piling it on to Syracuse. It just, you know, you just see, even though you get some of those teams and in, uh, in, in any sport where you're playing 
uh, and play tight for a few minutes, you get to see where the experience and just the skill level of a team that represents their entire country and the best in the country uh, really can flex their muscle against even a, a prime program like Syracuse. Sure, I mean, I think it's been a little bit of the MO of the U.S. team. They start a little bit slowly trying to figure out who's going to kind of take over the game, who's going to be the field general. That's a difficult thing to do when you have 12 people on the field who are used to being the leader on their individual teams, who are used to being the best on their team, and to put them all together on the field and still figure out how to run an effective offense and, and play as a team can be tough for the first few minutes, but they seem to be able, especially at this stretch in the second half, to figure it out. And we had talked a little bit about Syracuse and uh, their players to watch. Riley Donahue was ranked third on the team in scoring as a freshman. She had 28 goals, 15 assists, 43 points. Her father, Kevin, is actually an assistant coach for the Syracuse men's team, and her brother, Dylan, led the Syracuse men's team in scoring last year with 50 goals. Uh, the other player on Syracuse we've been keeping our eye on, number 37, Hallie Majorana. She was a first-team All-American in 2015. After ranking fifth in the nation with 91 points, she had 55 goals, 36 assists in her first season as a full-time starter. So, again, very, very skilled Syracuse squad, but uh, you just see the, the level of play difference uh, with Team USA. Once they actually warm up and get the blood flowing and, and find their kind of lanes on the field, very tough to stop. And certainly not that any one player, uh, you know, is the best or, or, or uh, you know, takes control of an entire game, but missing your field general and Kayla Trainer playing for the other side is tough for them. She's their, their leader, their vocal leader. She's their goal scorer. She's the one that they can go to. And in this situation, they don't have her there. They're ending up defending her on the other end. So um, Syracuse has a lot of firepower. They're certainly missing Trainer on the other end. And as we break from the timeout, again, Team USA scoring 19 goals last night. Well on their way to possibly repeat that feat. 14 to 5, the score in favor of Team USA over the Syracuse Orange. And again, I'm sure as, as disappointed and deflated as some of the, the Syracuse fans may be, definitely getting to watch a very exciting brand of lacrosse here today. Yeah, you know, I, I think Syracuse, they've been at this event three or four years in a row, and I think they're used to, uh, you know, the score not being that close. But, again, it's a great experience. No better tune-up for their season than to, to uh, you know, have it taken to them by the best in the country. Looks like we've got a new goalkeeper in for Syracuse, Brianna Starr. She's a freshman from the Syracuse area. Now play whistled. Then Syracuse with the ball. And now a scoring opportunity, possibly great pass, great setup, great shot, great goal. And just as we said it, Riley Donahue, keeping our eye on her, able to find the back of the net and get one more back for the Orange. Really impressed with this player, not just her ability to get herself open, but her finishing skill. You know, one of the things you see from freshmen often is they're used to not playing against really skilled goalies, so they tend to struggle sometimes with finishing. She's able to find the corners, is having no trouble putting the ball past Wills or Kaylee Waters or Liz Hogan. I'll take a look. It's actually the replay from the last goal, but on the restart from... from the play blown dead. It was a, just a, a fantastic effort by Syracuse and just a little bit of a defensive lapse by Team USA. Okay. We're gonna see a card here. Looks like that's 19 from Syracuse, Taylor Poplowski. Pretty dangerous swing there, so she'll spend a couple minutes on the sidelines thinking about that one. And first time we've seen Team USA man up today not that they needed it, but... <laughs> I'm not sure the freshman goalkeeper for Syracuse appreciates <laughs> that very much. So now we will see how Brianna Starr faces off. And just like that, another goal by number four, Shannon Gilroy. And Team USA now up 15 to 6. I think they do a pretty good job scoring on their own, but to give them an extra player in the offensive end is... Uh, He's sort of asking for it. <laughs> a little overkill, but <laughs> again, also one of those one of those opportunities where if you're Syracuse, you have to overcome that adversity, knowing that you're, you know, man down, and you can just see right here, just overwhelmed as the Syracuse defense and Gilroy able to 
get a nice little setup and dance through. A nice pick set just inside the eight and then able to find the net. Typically you'll see teams when they're playing man down and they all, you know, practice a man down defense. You'll see them sort of cheat to the middle. You can't cheat with this Team USA. Everyone can score. Everyone's a threat. So it's going to make it very difficult for uh, Syracuse to play man down. Desperately trying to get possession, try to run off some of this time. And just under 11 minutes remain in the game. Team USA again cycling around back behind the net. Here's Gilroy passing up and another shot and pass the freshman goalkeeper. Gilroy's going to get the assist. Katie Webster going to get the goal with 10.33 remaining. Another product of Syracuse, a 2014 graduate. Webster is taking her first run at the U.S. team here, so nice to see her get in the mix. 16-6 so is the Team USA advantage. Again, though, definitely looking forward to seeing Syracuse and how their season plays out. Again, they've had some very good runs and early in the game, you know, having a, a, even a two-goal lead, even though they're down by 10 now, to, to be able to say that you had Team USA down 4-2 to two is still uh, nothing, to, nothing to scoff at. And as we talked last night with Florida having a, a lead on Team USA too, there's definitely something that as the season goes on, they're, they're going to be able to be, put that little chip on their shoulder and say that they were able to stand with the best and have them down for a little bit. Yeah, I think if you're a... D1 college coach in the country and you've been watching these games online, you should definitely be concerned about Syracuse and Florida if you weren't already. They look very, very good very early on this year. Back up top is was Maggie Bill. Now again behind the net. And Bill. Trying to sneak through, and you can see the Syracuse defense. And playing very well outside the crease and forcing Team USA to kind of move the ball around and try and sneak through. <laughs> and going to be awarded to the Orange. Yep, Team USA stick extended in the crease there. The goal line official was blocked by a player, but the one up top caught her. Syracuse back on the attack and a little bit of a shove and <laughs> maybe a little bit of gamesmanship to try and oversell that and not give Team USA that extra charge, but Syracuse back on the offensive. And a little bit of contact on Nicole Levy, again already with Two goals in this game, one in the first half, one in the second. We're under nine minutes. Syracuse needs to show a little bit of patience here, try to give their defense a little bit of a break. They've played an awful lot of it so far in this second half. Now Levy trying to find some space on the net and that causing Liz Hogan to Come out of goal. Yeah, now possibly. Absolutely great check by Syracuse there to get that ball back. Now an opportunity in the wide open net and the goal again. It's number 47, Riley Donahue. And they've got seven. Just an excellent sequence caught Liz Hogan a little off guard. And again, you mentioned that stick check that really set up that whole sequence. And then Donahue has a wide open net, 8.14 to go. It's 16-7. Yeah, Hogan got caught behind, prepared to double behind with her teammate. Unfortunately, that pass went through. She hit the goal post with a little bit of force. I see her kind of stretching her arm out a little bit there, but looks like she's all right. And we've got mass substitutions in the offing now. And Thank you guys for spending your Sunday morning with us. I know it was probably a little earlier than you expected.
great time to play for the players. Not too hot. A little bit of overcast. Sun peeking through. The key is it's not raining. <laughs> that, nor, nor is it lightning. The <laughs> Thor machine has been silent as we expect it to be all day. Great facilities here at IMG. As much water as this field took last night, it's in great condition today, which is good because it's going to take quite a beating over the next few hours. <laughs> Again, uh, as we mentioned last night during the uh, Florida broadcast, IMG Academy, one of the elite training facilities in the world. Uh, professional athletes from all over come here to train, as well as having some of the best high school athletes in the world. Also, the host to uh, some Major League Soccer preseason, which they're getting ready for. So I'm sure this field going to uh, take a little bit more of a beating, but it's also very well taken care of here on the Gulf Coast of Florida. And another shot going off of the right post. I believe it was Karamupo just putting it to the side of Brianna Starr, but unable to find the back of the net. job by Syracuse to get this ball out in transition. They had a bit of pressure, but they've been able to find some seams in the middle. Great and transition there. Unbelievable goal by Nicole Levy. They're back within half. It's 16-8, but a beautiful pass found Levy in space. We'll take a look at the replay, but again, 6.52 remaining, and Syracuse, again, is not letting Team USA completely Put it on and we'll take a look at the replay and a beautiful setup. Just a wide open pass and underhanded scoop gets it into the top corner. Syracuse back within eight. Bit of a defensive mistake there with uh, Kelsey Sheridan, a little bit of miscommunication. But good for Syracuse for finding the open player. Off the draw again, Syracuse had it and lose it right back to Team USA. Well, it's great to see in both of these teams, Florida last night and Syracuse today, as they have no quit in them. Down eight, nine goals. They just don't give up. They keep playing. It's a testament to their coaching um, and to their attitude, and it's, it's great to see. We saw Brianna Starr with a quick save there, but that time snuck by again. Shannon Gilroy, again, definitely making her case to be a solid member of Team USA. Gilroy's one of the best finishers in the game. Um, I think the part of her game she's worked the hardest on is her redefending. Not only is she able to score, but she's able to help Team USA get the ball back. That's key to Ricky Freed's system. Um, and she so far looks like she fits well in it. Saw right there just catching Star, sneaking it almost right by her ear. And into the back of the net for the 17th goal for Team USA. And I believe Gilroy's third of the day. And the draw again taken back by Team USA. Just a little over six minutes remaining. Great draw control there by Morgan Stevens, UVA. Now an opportunity for Hallie Majorana, open net. And oh, what a save stop. by Liz Hogan. <laughs> Again, was off her line, and Syracuse had an opportunity at the open net. Liz Hogan able to just stick her, put her stick where the ball was going. An incredible stop by number two. Liz Hogan seemed to guess correctly there. Um, again, out of position, not where you want her to be, but just a great save. And now that quick counter, and then Katie Webster, and the Syracuse grad makes it 18-8, and a very quick comeback by Team USA to extend their lead, 5.42 to go, and Katie Webster able to put one by Brianna Starr. Take a look at the replay. And that long pass to start and set it up, and a Nice setup by Alyssa Murray. It's incredibly unselfish play by the U.S. team. Murray had an open lane on the outside, dished to her teammate instead. Off 
off the draw. Looks like Team USA was going to get it back. And again, possession still being traded and finally won back by Becky Lynch. Working her way down the far side, drops back off for Gilroy. And Webster. Bit of stick checking and a nice whip by Brooke Griffin. My star and another nice goal by Team USA. And they have already matched the score from last night's contest. 19-8 was how it finished between USA and Florida. And now it's 19-8 USA over Syracuse. Brooke Griffin worked hard to get her right hand open and come back to the middle, realized it wasn't going to happen, simply put it in her left hand and found a corner. Not that many players that can do that. She's one of them that can do it very well. And take a look at the replay. And again, just the almost ridiculous angle, the nice little fake spin backwards and just sneaks it under the crossbar and into the back. So 5-10 remaining, an 11-goal lead. Again, the layoff that we saw yesterday with the five and a half hours, you can definitely see slightly more rejuvenated Team USA actually getting the necessary rest. Yeah, I was interested to see how they'd come out today. They were, they were up late last night. Um, it was rainy, tough conditions, but uh, they seem to have come out here with, again, they're trying to make a US squad, so I'm not surprised, um, but it's good to see them sort of come out early in the morning and be ready to go. taking some time to let their opportunities create. Obviously, they know they're not in fear of losing, but like you said, there's 36 of the girls that are here. 12 of them will not be with Team USA, so right now everyone just trying to show what they can do. I'm hard-pressed to think of 12 players that aren't deserving to move forward, so a tough task for the coaching staff when they're finished up here. Team USA also probably, knowing that the game is well in hand, probably going to take a little more time off the clock and uh, try and avoid some of the stoppages and you know, get ready to go back to their uh, res <laughs> respective uh, places before they get ready for their tour. Sure, and they have a lot of respect for the Syracuse team. You know, no need to, to run up the score more. Um, Syracuse has, uh, like I said, been to this event several times. They're always very flexible, very willing. They're a good competitor. Um, so nice to see Team USA show a little respect here and just work the ball around. Now just kind of showing a little bit of their passing abilities. Again, Syracuse, though, not to take anything away from them, definitely uh, playing a, a tough defense to avoid Team USA from getting any more as we have now ticked below three minutes remaining. And again, that one lost <laughs> down, <laughs> falling Becky Lynch. Some decent stick work there going to the ground, able to keep the ball. Substitutions for Team USA and also now Alyssa Murray calling out some commands, but you can see a few of the players and midfielders and defenders just kind of standing around knowing that the game is going to wind down and probably finish like that a little bit of a check. And yeah, we're going to see a card here. One of the things you can't do, men's or women's, is get a cross-check up near the head or neck area. She caught her pretty high up on the back near the neck, and that's a pretty automatic yellow card there. Looks like that might be number eight, Alexa Radzovich. One of the freshmen Gary Gate pointed out as someone he thinks will make a big impact this season. Yeah, Maddie Crutchfield looks like is going to get Credit for that goal, and again, being a, a man up, uh, <laughs> Team USA really doesn't need it, uh, but with two minutes and nine seconds now, they have hit the 20 mark, as we saw on that free play. Just 
able to make one little dodge move around a defender and and 20 for Team USA. USA goals for line number 14, Maddie Crutchfield. The clock likely should be running here. An international play with a 12 goal lead. The clock does not stop, but maybe they're not sure why we have a stop here. And again, another the official stop the clock fraction. on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Doesn't go over their shoulders. Um, they'll reset it and start again. And now some quick contact. Immediately following the draw, we'll give it back to Team USA. Passing around again, I do not uh, do not envy the job that head coach Ricky Freed has uh, in trying to, to send 12 girls uh, home. It's just a, a very impressive squad getting ready for the world championships, and they are now see another infraction blown. It'll be given back to Syracuse, but again, Ricky Freed probably. Uh, has a good problem, though, having 36 phenomenal players to choose from. Ricky Freed now in his ninth year with the national team, first as an assistant and then now twice as a head coach. When I talked to him yesterday, we did talk about what are what's keeping him doing this? Why does he want to stay in it? He said his favorite part is actually constructing the team, the players that are going to fit the best together. His least favorite part, having to cut people to do that. So... Um, you know, I know he's excited to see who's going to be the next uh, World Cup squad or the one they're going to take on the tour this summer. Um, but he certainly does not enjoy having to tell 12 players that uh, they're not going to move forward. At least not for the tour. They will have an opportunity when they have a tryout again in August. It will go back to 36. Some of these players will likely be back in the mix then. Uh, but the 24 that come out of here will go on the tour in June. And now Team USA looks like able to draw the charge back in, uh, back in the Syracuse zone. But now with under a minute remaining, we'll likely see Team USA maybe get one more goal. But looks like now they may just kind of cycle around and pass it out with 30 seconds and the 12 goal advantage. All, all 36 of these players should be very... Um, very happy that they got this far. Um, very proud of themselves. These are tremendous women. Um, they work hard. A lot of them coach and they train on the side. They're not playing professionally like the men are, so good for them. Looking forward to seeing who's going to make it through. And as the clock winds down, that is how this game will end. So. Again, after an hour of play, a phenomenal competition by both sides. Team USA 20, Syracuse 8. Want to thank everybody for tuning in on uslacrosse.org. And stay tuned at 11 o'clock. We will have the Denver men taking on the U.S. men's national team. And uh, for those of you more familiar with the women's version of lacrosse, the men's version, a, a little more uh, high-paced, a little uh, harder hit. Uh, and all, obviously with all the men's players wearing helmets, uh, a li little more reckless. So we're uh, looking forward to seeing a different brand of lacrosse coming up here at 11 o'clock and 1.30. Uh, no doubt you'll see a physical game. I'm so excited to see, have the University of Denver here as the defending national champions. Excited to see our men's national team play. Should be a great day. So I want to thank everybody again for tuning in. For everyone at Stream Sports and my broadcast partner, Melissa Coyne, I'm Ryan Sudol saying so long from Bradenton. Stay tuned. 11 o'clock, we'll have the Denver men and the U.S. men's national team.